Okay, here we go. Hi folks, and welcome to Meaningful Money Live. If you give me a second. You should be able to see me now. Do you want to, uh, yeah, there we are. <laughs> can you see me and can you hear me, people? Yeah, good to go. Okay, we've got a few people uh, checking in. Uh, welcome to Penzance. This is probably the least inspiring of any view that I've ever talked over. Uh, this is my office, and I really should get some art on the wall. Do you not know think? I'm going to move that way. Um, this sort of, oh, 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 autofocus. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Tell you what, this is not a high quality uh, recording studio. <laughs> and I should start by saying, typically, I've been testing all morning and we've been absolutely fine. Um, and yet, just for the last uh, second, well, for the last 10 minutes or so, there's been some internet connection difficulties, an absolute nightmare, just what we don't need just before we're cracking on. So if uh, the connection drops, then just bear with me. It should pick up again very quick. Um, and you should pick up roughly where you left off. The only downside, of course, though, is that you probably have to watch the advert again, and that's because I'm too tight to spend the, uh, well, about 400 quid a month to get the uh, um, <coughs> the sort of non-ad-supported version of Livestream. So we're here. Um, it is uh, Financial Planning Week, and that's what these live shows are in aid of. Um, financial Planning Week is a uh, superb, um, initiative by uh, the Institute of Financial Planning and it's designed to sort of raise public awareness of the benefits of financial planning which is well there are many and various um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about them as we go through um, but there's going to be one of these uh, shows every day this week at 12.30 and we're going to cover different subjects um, and uh, we'll just see how we go. Okay. The reason why I like Financial Planning Week so much and why I'm a big fan and supporter and a member of the Institute of Financial Planning is that here in this country we are massively undereducated when it comes to financial things. So we don't teach our kids about money at school. We send those same kids to university and teach them that uh, debt is just a natural part of life because, you know, these days they leave university saddled with tens of thousands of pounds worth of debt in many cases. And, uh, you know, this is not good at all. And uh, coupled to that, we have a financial services industry which deserves its poor reputation in many cases because we are an oversold to nation. Uh, we have bought many financial products over the years. Some are excellent and some are less good. Um, but what we don't tend to do is educate people about the benefits of financial planning, which I believe is actually fundamentally very, very, very simple. Okay, so we're gonna get into um, some shows. Now, there's five shows coming for the next five days. So today is the basics. So we're gonna talk about sort of having an emergency fund, budgeting, um, and sort of having a plan to work to, all really important parts of financial planning. Um, and then on tomorrow, on Tuesday, we're gonna talk about foundations. So that will be um, sort of life assurance and uh, income protection, things like that. How to lay good foundations on top of which you can build your financial plan for the future. Wednesday then we're going to talk how to build, so savings and investments, putting money away, the different places you can put money, the pros and cons of each. And Thursday then pensions, oh, it's, which sounds boring but uh, it's really not, pensions and retirement, all the things around that. And then Friday we're going to talk about later life, so that's going to be equity release, um, long term care and things like that. So we've got uh, lots to look forward to, lots to talk about. Now, I should uh, you know, mention that the reason I'm doing this is because many of you, I'm sure, who are watching uh, know, but um, I started a website about 18 months ago called MeaningfulMoney.tv, uh, and that is a website full of YouTube videos explaining basic financial things, right from, you know, what is an ISA, what is a pension, do you need one, do you need an advisor, if so, how do you find one and how do you work with them, right through to long-term care, equity release, 
uh, it's becoming a pretty useful uh, resource, I think, of sort of quick fire videos of uh, pretty much every subject. Uh, well, I won't say that because there's a lot to come yet. There's 158 videos on there at the moment. Um, I have at least that many again I can come up with. And uh, my plan is to carry on all the way up to a thousand. So a long way to go. But I should mention, because uh, I want to do so, uh, I'll just pull up a couple of things here. <clears throat> Meaningful Money is sponsored by Seven Investment Management, good friends of mine, firm of investment managers in London. Um, they are also proud sponsors of the Institute of Financial Planning, um, who, you know, whose initiative Financial Planning Week is. So I must take this opportunity to say thank you to Justin and Tom and Wendy and all the guys at 7IM who are so generous in helping me to keep going. So thank you. And that's the little sponsor bit done. So here's the format for what we're going to do. Okay, we are going to sort of, well, we, I say we, me, there is only me here. And incidentally, any woman watching who says that men can't multitask, if you could see the number of screens in front of me, then, you know, you, you would, um, oh, well, I would disavow you of that notion. Because I've got Twitter going here on my iPad. In front of me here on my Mac is my um, sort of studio where I can control everything. And then the camera and the screen and the mixer for the audio and the chat window is on my other big screen behind. So there's actually four screens going here, not including my phone over there. So uh, we can multitask. It just depends on what you're asking us to do, really. Um, okay, so um, it's been a little while since we had a comment. So if you're still watching, guys, and it's coming through, okay, I'll just add offer more options, say we've got video stopping every 10 seconds or so. Um, fine at this end. Um, you know, there's going to be some limitations of the system. Fine at this end at the moment. Seems to be uh, uh, sort of uh, projecting pretty well. Thank you, Ian H. Pre reflecting my glasses. If I stick them up there, <laughs> I look a little bit less like an android. Um, but I maybe not be able to read what you say so well. But never mind. Never mind. Okay. So this is the format, rather. That's what I was saying. Um, 10 minutes of sort of spiel from me, really, explanation of the subject at hand, some things to think about, and then the rest of the time is going to be Q&A. And isn't it typical when you're talking live on camera, I have the mother of all itches right in this nostril, so I'm just going to itch it, but I'm not picking, I'm itching, okay? Um, so, there, yeah, 20 minutes Q&A after that. So use the chat on um, uh, the live stream things. Hold, depends where you're watching this. You're either watching it on the live stream channel, which is livestream.com, slash Meaningful Money, or you're actually watching it hopefully on the Meaningful Money site, which is the first video uh, on the site when you go to MeaningfulMoney.tv. Um, and there's a chat window next to the video player, so use it. I can, can see that right by the camera here, so I can see what you're saying. And if while I'm going along here you want to ask some questions, then do so. Um, now there's a couple of hashtags as well, so uh, do uh, join in the fun. Hashtags are FPW2011 for Financial Planning Week or MMTV Live, take your pick. I'll pick them both up here on my uh, spangly screen. Um, but it's good to have you all joining me. Thank you very much. I am seriously nervous. I've never done anything quite like this before. I'm used to just me in uh, sort of a tucked away part of Cornwall. Nobody else watching. Usually I design it that way and try and find remote places. Nobody else watching. But to know that I'm um, sticking my neck on the line and going live is uh, something new. But a lot of fun. Very excited. Did not sleep very well last night. You may be surprised to hear. Okay. So, <clears throat> episode one or part one of the uh, five-parter for Financial Planning Week. We're going to talk about the basics of financial planning. Okay, so this is the things to think about before you even get uh, involved in, um, you know, what products should you have, what bank accounts should you have, should you have a pension, should you have life insurance, all that comes later. Financial planning, when it's done right, let me take the volume down on my mic a little bit. Financial planning, when it's done right, lay some serious groundwork before you ever talk about product. And here's a sort of top tip to start with, really. If you are ever seeing a financial advisor and they begin speaking to you about product and, you know, commission and things like that, before they have spent some serious time with you getting to know your circumstances and your future goals and things like that, then you need to sack that advisor and get out of the room as quickly as you can. Financial planning, when it's done right, is that lays foundations. So a good financial planner um, will spend some time doing that with you. Okay, so these are my three basic things 
you need to think about when sort of embarking on the process of financial planning. So get these three right and you'll be pretty well set up going forward, okay? So, number one, see if the graphic comes up, there we go. Okay, number one is to begin with the end in mind. And incidentally, this light behind me looks like a halo. If I sit like that, I look like I'm holy. <laughs> I'm really not, um, but uh, it's just a problem with the light. Perhaps I'll see if I can fix that for tomorrow. Okay, uh, so begin with the end in mind. Really important. <clears throat> now, you know, anybody in any kind of workplace environment, if you've sat in a nasty course somewhere or had somebody come and speak at a seminar, you've probably heard dreadful David Brent-isms like, um, you know, if you uh, fail to plan, you plan to fail. Or if you don't know where you're going, you're guaranteed never to get there. Now, these are pretty, um, you know, nasty, you know make you feel a little bit sick when you hear them because they're so trite but what's they are true nonetheless <laughs> you know you have to know where you're going if you're going to get there ever and um, planning is just an essential part of that process when we're talking about financial planning depending on how old you are <laughs> watching this we've got different time scales we're going to be talking about so we're looking perhaps at the short term the next two to three years perhaps you've got some debt at the moment that you want to get out of um, perhaps you, um, um, you know, have something that you're aiming for. Maybe uh, you want to get married in two or three years' time or change the car. That's, those are things you can plan for, and those are, that's a short-term window. At the other end of the scale is long-term. So, you know, your retirement. Um, maybe, you know, you're my age now. My parents are in their sort of late 60s, early 70s. Um, and, but we may be thinking that perhaps at some point in the hopefully distant future, they may need long-term care. So, uh, you know, there's this sort of longer-term things to think about as well. And then, of course, there's everything in the middle. So, um, you know, my daughters are 12 and 8, and, you know, I'm going to start thinking about um, them getting married one day. Uh, one would uh, argue that if I'd listened to my own advice, I would have thought about that before now. I've thought about it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, long-term, short-term, all the stuff in the middle, um, all have to be planned for. Um, now, it's difficult for many people to look forward, to plan, you know, to particularly the further out you look, the more difficult it gets. So it's difficult for most people to imagine what their retirement might look like. I shouldn't say most, for many people to imagine what their retirement might look like. Now, there are some questions which a good financial planner will um, use perhaps or something similar to them to help phrase your thinking for that longer term view so uh, but rather than sort of me go over them now which will take up too much time probably well what i did is i did two videos very early on on meaningful money all of these and they are um, episodes three and four so go to meaningfulmoney.tv look for episodes three and four if you go to the getting started link um, you'll find them there pretty quick so these questions will help you look longer term, but you have to have something to work to, otherwise you're flying blind and you, you'll never achieve anything financially because you don't know what you're aiming for, okay? So please begin with the end in mind. It's the first of my three central tenets of financial planning. Now the second of those, central tenets, golden rules, whatever you want to call them, is to spend less than you earn. Now, this ought to be common sense, but it bears mentioning because no matter how rich you are or how poor you are, whatever stage you are at in your financial planning, income and outgoings are the root of financial planning. So everything starts and ends there. I've got wealthy clients in their 70s and 80s who... That's still the basis of our planning for them. So when we're wondering whether they're going to run out of money or whether they should be spending more money in their later life, it all comes down to how much are they spending and how much income have they got. Um, now, I'll be the first to admit that um, spending less than you earn is a lot easier to say than it is to do sometimes. 